Hello, it's a Simon Expert channel and today we again talk about physics. Now we are going to puzzle out for you why the kinetic energy occurs exactly in the form m squared divided by 2. But to do it mathematically strictly, we introduce it by the Lagrange formalism. The first part of this video will be quite technical, but it worth the result. Let's begin. In ordinary physical problems, epiphysics lessons, everywhere, you are faced with this formula. But why this formula holds such concrete structure? For instance, why we write down exactly v square, but not v in the 7th or 8th power? Moreover, we can ask, what will happen if we write not 2, but 3 or 4 or 8 or any number which you like most in the denominator? Do you know? In this video, you will get the answer. Firstly, I want to introduce to you a new formalism called Lagrange mechanics. Lagrange me mechanics is very convenient for classical system and also can be extended onto quantum ones. The first important notion of Lagrange formalism is an action functional. Functional is a mathematical construction which works in the following way. It takes a function as an argument and after integration returns a number as a result. In our case, our function argument is a trajectory of a particle. Under the integral, we have the function L, which is called Lagrangian. Lagrangian implicitly depends on the energy of the system. Lagrangian has three arguments, its coordinates, velocities and time, the standard physical set for describing any classical system. If the Lagrange function is known, you know all the information about your physical system. Moreover, with the help of it, all the conservation laws can be found. For example, you can find the conservation of energy, momentum and angular momentum. Now we omit this step, but if you are interested how to get from Lagrangian function all the conservation laws, please leave your comments and we will make a special video about it. Now let's talk about action. In general, action appears in physics as measure of the system's movement, because minimization of it gives us equations of motion. Let's try to understand it on a simple life example. Suppose I want to get from point A to point B. In general, there are a lot of ways to do it, but in fact only one, the most optimal way, will be realized. There is a fundamental principle called the principle of the least action, else Hamilton principle, which states that the physical trajectory is only the trajectory which generates the minimum functional S. Let's try to understand it. You can imagine our action as some universal currency of nature, which takes into account both expanded energy and time. The integral in the action counts while the Lagrange function all those expanded amounts and determines how much energy and time have been spent during the movement. Nature is very saving and Lex acts like an owner of a transport company who wants to carry goods to a distant recipient. Of course, this guy will count with great accuracy all the full expenses, in our case is energy, cost of autobahns, trajectory and traffic delays, time and he will choose the most optimal one in money as well as time expenses. He will spend his pounds or, or dollars, but our nature has chosen to pay off with our universe by the action S. Mathematically, it can be written by the following calculation, minimization of a function. We omit this step of derivation and without a peep write down the resulting equation from minimization of a functional. This equation is called Euler-Lagrange equation, which set up a connection between our coordinates, velocities and acceleration. So indeed, it's the equation of motion of our system. From a mathematical point of view, this equation is second-order equation for an unknown function r of t, is our trajectory. As this trajectory is found from minimization of functional, Therefore, according to the principle of the least action, this trajectory will be physical trajectory. This solution contains two arbitrary constants, which can be fixed after applying initial conditions. Now let's talk about math properties of the Lagrange function. As Lagrange function lives under integral, some ambiguities occur with choice of it. 
The first important property of this construction is that if you multiply your Lagrange function by a constant, the equations of motion remain unchanged. Let's prove it. For it, let's construct an action from this second Lagrange function. So, we write down under integral constant multiplied by first Lagrange function and integrate it over time. You see that constant is taken from the integral, so under integral remains only the action S1. So it is constant multiplied by S1. Now let's take a variation. Variation of action S2 is constant multiplied by variation of action S1, and it is zero. Therefore, you see that as our constant is non-zero quantity, we have that variation of the second action, is equal to variation of the first action and it is zero. Therefore, the equations of motion, to motion generated by these actions are the same. The second way to prove it is to substitute this second L function into our equation of motion. You see that this constant will be contracted and equations will remain unchanged. The second important property is that our Lagrange function is uniquely determined only up to a full derivative of a function which depends on coordinates and time. Let's prove it. Let's construct the action from this L2 function. We, we integrate this function from T1 to T2 over time. First term is L1 integrated over time T plus second term from t1 to t2 of a full derivative function of coordinates and time integrated over time. You see that our first term is the action S1 and second gives us function f from r2 t2 minus function f from r1 t1. You see that the last two terms are constant quantities. Therefore, when you take the variation of this function, delta S2, these last two terms give no contribution to the, this variation. Therefore, variation of S2 is equal to variation of S1. So, equations of motion cancel. And the last property of the Lagrange function is that it's an additive function. Consider two systems, say LA and B. This system has Lagrange function LA and this LB. Suppose that these systems are closed and non-interactive with each other. Then, if you want to find a Lagrange function of a full system, it will be simply a sum of Lagrange functions of these small two systems, say LA plus LB.